Uh, next up, we have uh, Marcelo. Thank you very much. Good morning or good afternoon, everybody. My name is Ankit, and I'm the founder and CEO of Mycelo. Let me introduce Mycelo to you in just five words. Google Maps inside a building. Think about it. Google Maps inside a building. Everything else has been mapped out. The universe, the solar system, the outdoor world, the underwater oceans. But your shopping mall, or the conference you went to last week, or the airport, the college campus, the museum, all the places where we spend all of our time, there's no maps. And that's what my cell is all about. Let me show this to you visually. Here I have Google Maps centered in on Stanford Shopping Mall. Now we know there is so much more here. There's 200 stores, there's people, there's products, there's sales, there's people lost. There's so much happening here. But where is it? It's almost as if the map has a hole. Let me fill it in. That's an indoor map. That is the Stanford Shopping Mall, and it has all the stores and all the data. Now, there's two things I want to tell you about this. One, the maps are geo-accurate. They blend in with the actual world. It's not just a picture, but a real map. And the second thing, it's brand new real estate. It's real estate that didn't exist before for social content, for navigation content, for advertising content. It's pristine land, if you will, where we can overlay all kinds of relevant and personal content. So when you're at that Stanford uh, mall, or you're at an airport, or you're at a convention center, you can finally get the right information at the right time. Like Stanford Shopping Mall, we've done maps of places throughout the country. In the last four months alone, over 1,000 locations. Shopping malls, convention centers, airports, hotels, the local IKEA, Fry's, all kinds of cool places where we, where we spend time. And that's what we do at Micello every day, make more and more maps. But let's take a step back. Why are we doing this? We're doing it because we believe we have some phenomenal content that everybody wants. And we're wrapping it into a platform which others can use. We have data like the geometries of every store, what stores are in a shopping mall, what the map structures look like, navigation content, all kinds of information that we're going to expose to developers to build in their own applications. Whether it's for a mobile app, for a kiosk, for the TV, for the web, we're making our maps available everywhere. Our core is to keep making more and more maps and keep sort of creating additional services and features like showing your location on the map or providing navigation on a map and making that available for everybody to use. To showcase this, we've built a few of our own applications to show you what you can do with a map. Go ahead to the, uh, the Apple iTunes store or Android and download the Micello Indoor Maps application. It'll show you all the maps we've done in the United States and let you do some pretty cool things. The next time you go to a shopping mall, search for something. All the stores that have it will change color and show you, hey, I have shoes, or I have this, or I have that. Or if you're lost and you need directions, touch on two different uh, objects on the map, and it will draw a path guiding you to get there. You can do so many cool things with indoor maps. Just look back three years ago or four years ago when Google Maps opened up their APIs for the outdoor world. Indoor world is the next step. And that's where we believe there's a lot more value because that's where we always spend our time. I'm really excited to announce today for the first time that one of our customers has gone live and is using our platform in their own application. Singapore Telecom, one of the world's leading mobile carriers based out of Asia, contacted us and we went ahead and made 48 of the top shopping malls in Singapore. Their application called Go Shopping just went live yesterday and the key problems are indoor navigation. I'm not sure how many of you have been to Singapore, but the malls there are eight stories tall and it's impossible to find your way around. Singapore's interest, or sorry, Singtel's interest here is they want to provide promotional content for the shopper so that they can get sales information the next time they visit their, sh their local shopping mall. So we're really excited that we have, we're, now, we're, not, we're not the only tenants of our platform, if you will. We now are inviting others to use our data. And I want to leave you with one sort of big thought here. There are multiple verticals or markets that indoor maps can supply. First one is retail. We've been contacted by numerous department stores, the Lowe's and Home Depot's and Target's and Macy's of the world. So the next time you go to Home Depot, you can say, hey, I'm looking for a hammer and get directions there. Right? This is the new wave of innovation when it comes to mapping. It's exposing all the venues and making it available to you in an easy way. Retail is a huge market to provide people with you know, consumer-friendly information. Air, sorry, events. Wow, I'm so excited about events. Because the next time you go to a conference, maybe you can find your LinkedIn contacts plotted on a map. So at the conference, you can find exactly where all your friends are or your contacts are. Or think about an airport. 
where you want to know whether you should go get the Starbucks before or afterwards, or whether even if you have time to get Starbucks, if there's enough time to go and take the detour. And finally, business campuses. Very exciting. We're all here at the Microsoft campus. I'm curious to know if there's a conference room available or what events are happening here or if there's any product announcements. So much data is fragmented in everywhere else in the world. It should be on a map. The map is a fantastic medium to showcase any and all of this data. So folks, that's my cello. Think of us as Google Maps inside a building. Thank you. So how do you scale the business in terms of acquiring more maps? Is that a scalable process, something that can be automated? We spent over a year figuring out how to do this in a scalable way. Because in fact, there was a company called Map Networks that was acquired by Navtech about five years ago. They had maybe 100 maps. But they weren't able to break through. And the key for us was how can we create almost an assembly, assembly line process, if you will, for making a map. So we built the software tools where we can have our operators in our quote unquote map factory come in and keep making more and more maps. And for us, that's the most important thing. How do we get to 1,000 maps? How do we get to 10,000 locations? How do we get to 50,000 locations? And we believe that our tools scale to, scale to those numbers. And we've proven it by getting to over 1,000 locations in about three or four months. Barry, look like you had a question. Two questions. Uh, first is, do you have navigation technologies or methods that allow you to have the granularity in an inside versus, you know, it's a larger granularity in an outside? There's a sort of a brand new market here that's emerging. And there's three different companies or three different categories of companies. One are the indoor positioning technology companies where you have your Qualcomm's and Nokia's and a bunch of startups in Sunnyvale working on indoor positioning. Yeah. You're going to have the mapping companies. That's where we play. And you're going to have a bunch of applications that are being built. So we're actually working actively with the indoor location technology companies, helping them get to market faster. For them to showcase that their technology works, they need an indoor map. They need us. So we're definitely very close to a lot of the companies who are trying to break through on indoor positioning. And my second question is, can I block the mall map on my daughter's iPhone? <laughs> <laughs> you can block her credit card. <laughs> So I uh, downloaded your maps the other day. Great stuff. Thank you. How do you make money out of this? I mean, so I, so I get the licensing model kind of conceptually, but can you yeah. talk a little bit more about you know, average selling price Do you think you're going to be able to get once you get more developed and kind of what's the size of the market opportunity? So for us, we believe that mapping is going to be core for the creation of all, for thousands and thousands of applications. And we want to be the mapping provider. Now, for us, there definitely is a licensing play here where companies like the internet mapping companies, your Navtex and Yahoo Maps and MapQuest can come to us and license the data. There are companies, there, there are a lot of, there's the department stores that can license the content on a quarterly or monthly basis from us for their own applications. So for us, the price point is really dependent on the number of maps that they're licensing. So for us, the more maps we have, the more content we have to license out. Another angle for us is also to build a potential ad network which services the indoor location. So if you're a developer and you want to use Mycelo Maps for free, go ahead. We'll publish a few ads in there and potentially make money together. Because today's ad networks focus on the zip code level. But if you're inside a shopping mall and you do a search for shoes, I have a person who I know who's looking for shoes in a shopping mall and there's 10 places to get shoes. How can I direct that person to the right store? So there's a lot of, I think, clever and interesting ways here, both from the licensing and from uh, sort of an ad perspective to make money. Great, thank you.